It's almost time to make your voice heard in the race for president. The Idaho presidential primaries are coming up on March 10th. The Democratic race has been getting much of the national attention as the candidates spar in debates and voters pick their favorites in caucuses and primaries. But did you know President Trump isn't the only candidate on the Republican ballot? If you're voting Republican in Idaho, you'll find five other names on yours. Today, we're focusing on what all voters need to know before heading to your polling place. An Idaho presidential primary primer, ahead on Viewpoint. From Idaho's News Channel 7, this is Viewpoint. Welcome to Viewpoint, I'm Doug Petcash. We've been watching as voters in other states cast their ballots in presidential primaries and caucuses. Now it's almost Idaho's turn. The Idaho presidential primaries are coming up on Tuesday, March 10th. The Republican, Democratic and Constitution parties are all holding primaries on that date. The Democrats decided to switch from a caucus to a primary this time around. By the way, Idaho is one of six states to have a primary that day. According to the Idaho Secretary of State's office, there will be 17 Democrats on the ballot, even though many of those have ended their campaigns. That's because they didn't file official withdrawal paperwork with the Idaho Secretary of State's office by the January 17th deadline. The Republican ballot will have six names on it, of course, President Donald Trump, but also former Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld and four others. The Constitution Party also has six candidates on the Idaho presidential primary ballot. So who can vote? in which presidential primary. In the Democratic presidential primary, registered Democrats and unaffiliated voters can cast ballots. Unaffiliated means you're not a member of any party, an independent. In the Republican presidential primary, only registered Republicans can vote. It is a closed primary. And in the Constitution Party primary, registered Constitution Party members and unaffiliated voters can take part. Today, I'll be talking with leaders of the Idaho Democratic and Republican parties and the Secretary of State's office to get you ready for the March 10th primaries. We start with the Democrats because it's the closest race and the winner will go up against President Trump, although he is not the only name on the GOP ballot. My first guest is Idaho Democratic Party Vice Chairman and Political Director Jesse Maldonado. Jesse, thanks for being here today. Thanks for Appreciate having me, it. Doug. Appreciate it. All right, so the Idaho Democratic Party decided um, after 2016 to switch to a primary this time from a caucus system. Why did you do that? It was a mess in 2016, quite frankly. Um, it cost us a lot of money to put it on, and it, I think personally, and we've decided as a whole, as the governing body of the uh, state party, our state central committee decided it disenfranchised folks actually because um, you had to show up and you know find a babysitter, be there for two to three hours, wait in line, and if you weren't traveling or what have you and you couldn't actually participate in the be there for those two to three hours, you couldn't vote. So we're really excited about being able to enfranchise more Idahoans. It's less, less of a time commitment. Less of a time commitment, just much easier to do a primary. Now, the Democratic primary is kind of a semi-closed mm -hmm. primary. Um, registered Democrats and unaffiliated voters, as I explained. Um, in other words, independents can vote in it. So why do it this way when on the May 19th statewide primary, it will be an open primary where anyone can vote, including Republicans? Right, sure. So we were actually told by the DNC that it had to be partially closed. And it was not a decision that we made on our own. We obviously want to enfranchise anybody and think that democracy is a great thing so anybody can vote in our primary and that's why we do it that way on May 19th but as far as the presidential primary goes it was uh, handed down to us by the national party that we had to be semi-closed so all right so how many delegates are at stake and then how would those be allotted sure so we have 20 delegates total going to the national convention from Idaho it's completely proportional and there's a threshold that the candidates have to get. Folks have probably been familiar with that if they've been watching Iowa and Nevada. It's 15% and New Hampshire, 15% to qualify for delegates and that will be based on your statewide performance. So, so in other words, yeah. the person with the highest percentage would get, get the vote. most delegates yes. down and then yep. down through the list. Correct. Um, so uh, just to be clear here, who can, uh, as we talk about who can vote, can somebody switch their party affiliation and vote on the, on the 10th in the Democratic primary. Yes, actually there has been no deadline set to change your party preference before the primary coming up. For the presidential primary, there is still a 90 day deadline for the state primary, but for the presidential primary, there is no deadline. So you can change today if you went into your elections office or when you go to vote on March 10th. And so what would somebody need to bring with them if they wanted to do that? And or also just to vote in the primary? They could just go and update their registration at the elections office or if they need to register to become a new voter, they would just have to bring some form to prove that they are 
they live where they do. So. And um, on the day of as well? Yes, uh, we're, we're really fortunate to proof have. Proof of residence. Yep, and a, yep. uh, fortunate to have same day registration here in Idaho for sure. So, yeah. um, so what is the most common question or questions <laughs> that your office has been getting in the lead up to the primary? The questions just have been coming because folks are really used to us having a caucus system in Idaho because that's what we've been doing for, for years. And folks are just really unsure if we're having a caucus or a primary. So we're doing our best um, with your help and everybody's help to inform folks that it is a primary this time and that is what we are doing. So that's the number one question we're receiving is what kind of, how can I vote, really? So, so rather than going to some kind of assembly hall where right. they're gonna stand around for a couple yeah. hours and pick candidates mm -hmm. by moving around the room, they basically go to their normal polling place. Yep, or they can request an absentee ballot or they can go and vote early up until next Friday and then, or they can vote That's from- eight, Friday, March 6th. March 6th, yes. sorry, yes, yeah. March 6th. And, but 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. you can vote on election day on March 10th at your regular polling location. And also hand in those absentee and, ballots yep. by 8 p.m. in your county Correct. as well. Um, so when you look at the overall picture about what is energizing voters or not energizing them, what effect are you seeing of the, the impeachment of President Trump in terms of uh, the energy of Democratic voters? Has it pumped them up? Has it disappointed them? Maybe turned them off or no effect and it's kind of even? I think that, you know, folks have always known that the president has been not doing things that they would like him to be doing. Um, as far as Democratic voters go, I mean, that's just been apparent from the, from the get-go. Um, but there's obviously been some issues with meddling in elections and stuff that have definitely encouraged Democratic voters to want to turn out because they, they know that there's, uh, the other side is just not taking things seriously when it comes to our elections or the president is, you know, calling in favors. So that kind of stuff has definitely encouraged folks and we've heard that and we've seen that in our volunteer numbers and our registration numbers that kind of stuff we've seen it that people are energized and actually we just sold out our biggest dinner of the year for the first time in our party's history um, we just sold out our biggest dinner because folks are energized so and that's the the gala with uh, yes Mayor, Pete, with yeah. Pete Buttigieg yeah. coming in on Correct. May 7th yeah. and uh, so yeah I was gonna say when you have a major candidate like that come to visit this you know our state does that also, regardless if maybe the voter is supporting that particular candidate, does that also energize people? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think that we have sent asks out to every single presidential campaign and candidates, whether they can come or a surrogate can come, but we believe that regardless of who came, and we believe that there will be others that are going to make a visit here to Idaho, is that the energy is going to be, exceed what we've seen before, as far as turnout goes especially, but Pete is going to do, has been a great draw for us already, and other candidates or any other candidate would have been such a draw too because folks, again, are just really energized right now. Any word from any other candidates at this point? Uh, we have a couple that are, we're waiting on some confirmations and they've got some scheduling that they've got to figure out. There's a couple other dinners that we're sharing the seventh with, so they've got to figure out how they can get here in time. Got so, it, got yeah. it. Um, does the Democratic Party back a particular candidate? No, we are <laughs> viciously neutral, as we like to say. Viciously yes, neutral. Yes, we, we make sure that we support everybody equally and give them all um, equal opportunities to talk to our voters, but we do not play in the, in the game. Overall in 2016, voter turnout was in, in the primary, the presidential primary was 29.5%. What are you expecting this year? Definitely more than that. <laughs> um, we Definitely, we saw 41,000 fo more folks vote in our gubernatorial primary in, 18, in 2018 than we did in our presidential caucus in 2016. So for a, president, or for a gubernatorial primary, it was twofold than it was for your presidential caucus. So we're expecting, I think, somewhere right around the range of probably 90,000 folks to get out and turn out in our primary. That would be uh, somewhere where we've kind of calculated out. So. And finally, um, in 2016, Bernie Sanders pretty handily beat mm -hmm. um, Hillary Clinton in the caucus. Uh, do you have any kind of polling or indications at this point of which candidate might be leading here in Idaho? None, none really whatsoever. We have campaigns that have staff on the ground that I think is going to help turn out voters for them. And that is going to be, that's probably the closest indication we have of who is trying their, their hardest right now in Idaho to turn out voters for them is who's sending paid staff here. A lot, most of the campaigns have volunteers here and those are just, they kind of are self-grown, but some campaigns have sent staff here, but we have no polling or anything, but enthusiasm has been strong for all, almost all the candidates really as far as phone calls and interest and messages and 
Um, even the straw polls that we have at our debate watch parties have been pretty even for really? everybody. Okay. So, yeah. Jesse Maldonado, Vice Chairman of the Idaho Democratic Party, I appreciate your time today. Thanks for helping to get people ready for the March 10th primary. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And you're welcome. Well, up next, the Republican presidential primary. I'll talk with Idaho GOP Chairman and former U.S. Congressman Raul Labrador. In 2016, we did something so drastic, we had to wait four years to try it again. It's the leap year sale at Furniture Row and everything is on sale. Shop today and find amazing deals on sofas and sectionals. Deep discounts on dining sets, tables, and chairs. Incredible bargains on king, queen, and kids' bedroom sets. And supercharge your sleep life with a new mattress. Plus, get exclusive four-year no-interest financing. That's no interest until next leap year. But hurry, the leap year sale at Furniture Row ends Monday. Better mornings start here. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Yeah, and you can see all the crows. It it's looks like, like an Alfred Hitchcock yeah, movie. Yeah, big portion of the weekend is going to be nice. Lori Vallow has been arrested by Kauai police in Hawaii. Is Fun. this a biter? No. Well, I mean, anything with the mouth to might, though. From the Boise Rescue Mission, he is the honorary unpaid employee of the year. This is the morning rush. We've got some tasty treats in the studio. We do. Come on over. Better mornings start here. Today's morning news. Weekdays on Idaho's News Channel 7. We start the conversation. There's more fuel for this fire. Exactly. You tell us what you think. I moved here to Boise in September of 2006 to be with my family. We show you what's going on. She can see it. See that? <laughs> That's incredible. And what's blowing in? Looking at these numbers, 15 to 30 inches. With some of the foothills for this evening, it's the news at four. Weather is science. And science is awesome. That's why we're visiting schools all across the Treasure Valley to share the wonder of weather with bright young minds. Wow. You guys are the smartest bunch. Because the future of this science is in their hands. That's a great question, okay? You guys do a really good job with that. And what better way to learn than by having fun? Can you imagine? And welcome back to Viewpoint. I'm Doug Petcash. President Trump is not running unopposed in the primary, although he is, of course, expected to cruise to the nomination. Republican voters in the Idaho presidential primary will find five other names on the ballot. Here's the full list for you. President Donald Trump, former Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld, former U.S. Congressman from Illinois Joe Walsh, who recently dropped out, and three others. My guest today is Idaho Republican Party Chairman and former Idaho Congressman Raul Labrador. Congressman, thanks for being here. It's great to be here. All right, with President Trump all but officially having the nomination wrapped up, why do you think it's important for Republicans to still turn out and vote in the Republican presidential primary? Well, I think two main reasons. Number one, you want to show your level of enthusiasm for the president, for the things that he has done. There's so much enthusiasm in, in Idaho for him, and I think that needs to be reflected in the polls. And number two, I think you want to make sure that you don't allow the other candidates to really get that many votes, because in, in Idaho, you know, you're seeing nationally 95 percent of Republicans are supporting President Trump, and you want to make sure that in Idaho that's reflected closely. It's not, I don't know what the final result's going to be, but I think it's going to be a really good turnout for President Trump. And it's 32 delegates, I believe, Correct. in the Idaho presidential primary on the Republican side. How Correct. are those delegates divvied up? Is it's it winner-take-all? It's winner-take-all. You have to get 50, if you get 50% of the vote, you, you take all the delegates. What's your take on the fact that there are other people on the Republican um, Party ballot and that it's not, uh, you know, uh, he's not running unopposed? I think it happens at every single election cycle. There's going to be always somebody who's uh, a malcontent or discontented with the president for whatever reason that they may have. And, and I, I don't think that's a problem that we have a Republican primary, but I think what is interesting is to watch a president going through re-election that it has such high popularity within the party. If you remember our last Republican president, he was having some problems in his primary because there was so much discontent in the Republican party with some of his policies. So I think the, the, the Republican party is united nationally. I know that we're united here in Idaho and we're excited about November especially watching you know, the, the train wreck that the Democrats are going through right now in, in their selection of, of a candidate. And I think it's going to be fun to watch what happens in November. Is there any chance the president will come here between now and November? 
I hope so. I, I cannot guarantee that. I, as you know, in presidential elections, you're going to the states where, uh, where you know, maybe there's a, a little bit more of a contest. Uh, unfortunately for us, which is great for the state, but it's not good to bring the president to Idaho. We, we're a pretty Republican red state, and I think the president's going to be looking at other areas. But I'm still working pretty hard on it. We are working on having a pretty special guest come uh, in a few months that I can't announce yet, but it's, it, we're, we're going to try to bring as many people as possible to, to the state of Idaho. So when will Ivanka be here? Um, <laughs> no? <laughs> Just kidding. We'll find out. All right. Um, <laughs> So as I mentioned earlier, the Republican primary is a closed mm -hmm. primary. Why did the party switch to that a few years ago? Because we, we think that Republicans should be selecting who the Republicans on the ballot are going to be. I, that was actually the first bill that I, that I introduced when I was in, a member of the House, a member of the legislature here in the state of Idaho about 14 years ago. Uh, because we just believe that if you're going to vote in a re Republican primary, that you should be a Republican. Uh, you know, it hasn't totally foreclosed people from switching over because as you know you can switch if you're unaffiliated you can switch you still have a lot of unaffiliated people who are really democrats that they end up switching to the republican primary whenever they want to and democratic registered voters can do that this year as well Co correct correct but but i think overall it has worked pretty well for the party and is it because you don't want those voters coming in who are democrats and you know um stuffing the box for a person Correct. that they don't want to win. Yeah, because what they usually do is they, they go in and they just, they know that a Republican's gonna win statewide, for example, and they'll come in and they will vote for a Republican who is maybe a little bit more moderate or for a Republican who is, a, is not as conservative as they, as they would like to have at, you know, in a state elected office or in a congressional district or something like that. And, and, and they just kind of play around with it. But you know, it is what it is and we just keep winning. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. What effect do you think impeachment of President Trump had on him in the eyes of voters? Did it, did it damage him? Or did it help him? You know, I think the unfairness of the impeachment process actually galvanized the Republicans to get behind uh, President Trump. You, have, you keep seeing his poll numbers just get higher and higher within the Republican Party. I have never seen a, a president running for re-election with 95% approval within his own party. And as you're seeing right now in the Gallup poll, not only is that happening with the, within the party, but his numbers are actually inching up with the general public. I think the last poll that I saw, he was at 52%, which he hasn't had in, in, in a long time, if ever. So he's, he's doing quite well. I think people saw that impeachment process as an unfair process, regardless of what they think about the president's actions. And, and I that's, think- That's the way I was gonna would ask yeah. too, is like the, maybe the process, but are they, mm -hmm. they are you, what are you hearing about you know, the phone call and you know, asking a foreign leader for a favor? You know, I remember he asked a foreign leader for a favor when he was talking about, hey, let's talk about the 2016 election. Let's, we're hearing some things happen and we have this 2016 election and let's talk about that. Uh, I don't think most people are either paying attention or the ones that are paying attention were actually turned off by, by the process. Do you think voters, uh, 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 there, there seems like there are very staunch camps. Yes. You know, there's definitely the Trump mm. base and there are definitely the Democrats mm. who, who don't like him at all. Mm -hmm. Are there more or fewer voters now in the middle these days who can be swayed one way or the other? I think that's a great point. I think there's very few voters that can be swayed and I think there's very few voters that, uh, that really don't know who they're voting for. The question really is who is the most energized? Are the Republicans going to be more energized than the Democrats? And what you're seeing nationally is that Republicans are much more energized. You look at the rallies that Trump is having all over the United States, and he's bringing in thousands and thousands of people. At a, in, and as you mentioned earlier, at a time when we're having primaries where really there's no contest. Uh, who's going to win. There's no question about who's going to win. So I think the Republican Party base is really energized. I think the American people is watching as the Democrats mm -hmm. are about to nominate a socialist to be their nominee. And I think um, you, you talk to union members, you talk to middle class families, they don't like what, what's happening in the Democratic Party. 
and they're going to start, uh, you know, coming in droves to the Republican Party. And unlike the Democratic Party, which is taking a um, an unbiased stance, uh, not not picking, you know, mm -hmm. supporting a particular candidate, the Republicans are going all in on President Trump, even having a President Trump victory party on Absolutely. election night. Right? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Congressman, thank you very much, and Chairman of the Idaho GOP, uh, Raul Labrador, I appreciate your time and your. Uh, your opinions and, and knowledge on what we're talking about today, getting people ready for the primary. Thank you so much. Thanks for doing this show. I appreciate your time. Well, up next, the Deputy Secretary of State on the nuts and bolts voters need to know. We'll tell you where to find some online voter resources and what the KTBB.com voter guide has to offer. In 2016, we did something so drastic, we had to wait four years to try it again. It's the leap year sale at Furniture Row and everything is on sale. Shop today and find amazing deals on sofas and sectionals. Deep discounts on dining sets, tables, and chairs. Incredible bargains on king, queen, and kids' bedroom sets. And supercharge your sleep life with a new mattress. Plus, get exclusive four-year no-interest financing. That's no interest until next leap year. But hurry, the leap year sale at Furniture Row ends Monday. Need glasses? Your tax refund goes further at iMart Express, where you'll spend less on the have-tos and keep more for the want-tos. We offer a huge selection, same-day service, and two pairs start at $38.71. Make the most of your refund. iMart Express. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I played JV basketball. I'm sorry. I don't think it looks right. This is good, and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm going to call my dad. Did you know that there's a critical shortage of emergency blood supply? March is American Red Cross Month, and you can help by signing up to make a blood donation to the Red Cross on March 4th at the Boise Public Library at Hillcrest. Walk-ins are always welcome, but registration is highly recommended. Plan to be a part of the effort and help save lives together. See the Idaho events calendar for more. To post your local event, visit the Idaho events calendar at KTVB.com. He's got a level of enthusiasm that's always appreciated by our guys. He changes the way you see the world. As the Broncos light up the basketball court, this super fan lights up their lives. Yeah, baby. An all new 7 0 tonight on the News at 10. And we're focusing on what voters need to know for the March 10th Idaho presidential primaries. First of all, the polls will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. that day. Early voting runs through Friday, March 6th in the counties that offer it, including Ada and Canyon. I'm joined now by Deputy Secretary of State Chad Houck, who heads up the Elections Division for the Secretary of State's office. Chad, thank you for being here today. My pleasure, Doug. Thank you. Well, first of all, as I mentioned earlier, um, voter turnout in the 2016 primary and caucuses was just under 30%. Is the Secretary of State's office getting indication, any indication of how voter turnout might be this year? Well, I mean, it's going to be very difficult for the county clerks to predict what voter turnout is going to be. That's certainly one of the challenges we've been discussing with our 44 clerks uh, over the course of the last several months, in fact, largely because the Democrats have never had a primary to where we can look back on historical numbers and anticipate what those numbers are going to look like. So. Yes, we're anticipating larger numbers showing out because of the, all the different pieces that play into this year's presidential primary election. Um, and we expect that that's going to cause maybe a little bit of chaos at the polls, but I know the clerks are definitely very alert to the fact that they're, they've got a challenge in front of them. All right, let's get to the nuts and bolts. Um, we have a graphic um, to show who can vote in which primary, and we'll be putting that up on the screen here in a second. So can you just lay it out for us once again so that everybody's clear on what they can do and what they need to do to vote in a certain primary? Certainly. So as we've already heard, um, this is a very unique presidential primary. The Republican primary technically is a closed primary, which means that in order to receive a Republican ballot, you have to be a registered Republican. The unique piece with this presidential primary is that anyone can change to get that Republican Party status right at the polls. So while the Republican primary will be closed, anyone functionally can walk into that primary, change their party affiliation to Republican, including unaffiliated voters, and, and be able to vote in that Republican primary. On the Democratic and constitutional primaries, uh, they've invited unaffiliated voters to participate as well. So while yes, a Republican could walk into either of those primaries and affiliate to that party, uh, 
for the presidential primary and receive that particular ballot, an unaffiliated voter can actually walk in, request one of the ballots of either the Constitutional or Democratic Party, and still walk out unaffiliated. Uh, for anyone that does actually make that party change, the important date to remember is that they have about three days after the primary before we get into the deadline date for party change for that May primary that's coming so that's up that's the statewide. 90 day deadline? So it's, it's, so it's the last day that a, that a uh, candidate can declare, and that is the 13th for, of the March. for, the, for the May primary, but the 13th of March, yes. And so just a couple of days there to, and that's the final date. People, can they, can they change, they won't be able to change parties then They won't be able to May change primary. parties in the May primary at the, at the poll. Now an unaffiliated voter, uh, as long as they get to that unaffiliated status by the 13th, an unaffiliated voter in that May primary will still be able to go to the poll and uh, select which ballot or affiliate to a particular party. And all of that information to try and help map this out a little bit is on our website at idahovotes.gov. Idahovotes.gov, yeah, there's a lot of great resources there for sure. Um, now, leading up to the, the primary, what is the most common question or questions that you've been getting at your office? Is there confusion? We typically get a handful of common questions. Again, all this information can be found on Idaho Votes. We have some very uh, simple tools there to help you answer this. But the most common questions we get are, am I registered to vote? Uh, so to address that one first, in Idaho, uh, we have the luxury of being able to register at the polls. Um, you can find the information on what you need to be able to do so, but in, in very simple form, you need to be able to prove where you live and prove that you're uh, an Idaho, a citizen of Idaho for the required amount of time prior. Uh, you can do that at the polls. The second most common question we get is, where do I vote? Uh, so we have a precinct lookup tool, as well as all the counties have precinct lookup tools on their county websites and again at Idaho Votes. Um, we, uh, we often will get the question of whether someone has received their absentee ballot. And again, there's a lookup for that on Idaho Votes. So those are probably the most common three questions. Where do I vote? Am I registered? And if I voted absentee, did you get it yet? Yeah, and we only have 10 seconds, but the other thing we talked about on the phone the other day was that making sure that people understand they can only vote in one primary. Absolutely, you get one ballot no matter which one it is. All right, Chad Houck, Deputy Secretary of State, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure, thank you. Now check out our voter guide on the KTVB.com homepage for more information on the March 10th presidential primary, including the requirements to vote in the Republican, Democratic, or Constitution Party primaries, and links to the party websites and the Idaho Secretary of State's office, the one that Chad Houck was just talking about, IdahoVotes.gov. We have a link there. That is the Presidential Primary Voter Guide on KTVB.com. Again, the Secretary of State's office set up IdahoVotes.gov. Also, if you text the word VOTE to 208-321-5614, we'll send you a link to the Voter Guide. And that's all of our time for this week's Viewpoint. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Doug Petcash. I'll see you back here next Sunday morning for another Viewpoint.